Hi, welcome to Prosper United Methodist Church. We uh, had some technical difficulties this morning with our new equipment, so we're having to uh, redo some of this. And so this will just be a brief kind of recapsulation of the, the service, the sermon, the prayer, and uh, that's going to be about it. Uh, our music and, and uh, uh, other stuff is, is uh, the response kind of thing won't uh, work here. As we uh, move on into the service, uh, I want to start the, with the homily, and if you would take a moment to pause the video and go to read John 15, verses 1 through 8, and then you'll know what it is I'm preaching about. Jesus talking about the vine being, and being the vine dresser, God being the vine dresser. So, I was talking this morning with Reva Kimmel, our uh, pianist, and she and I got to talking about what great folks there are here at the Prosser UMC and what a wonderful church it is. I know Allison and I have enjoyed it right from the very beginning and uh, wonderful people here. One of the things I've enjoyed being a part of is the men's group here at the church and one of the reasons why is I finally learned how to prune roses. I'd never known, I'd always been very tentative, uh, just kind of cutting a little bit uh, uh, here and there, just some of the deadwood stuff off. But uh, they taught me that what you want to do is take the whole bush and cut it down to about like that and about like that. And uh, that's what it's going to winter out as. Uh, and, and sure enough, they did that and it came back. And it came back just beautiful. They always do, every year. So I, I learned you can, you can really prune a lot there. Uh, and that's kind of what uh, we're talking about today is pruning. Uh, what's going on with that. When I prune, not only do we when I, do I prune uh, all the green stuff off, but uh, down to a certain height? But also, I get rid of some of the dead wood that's in there. Sometimes those uh, those shoots just kind of die out and they become dead wood. And by cleaning that out, I create more space for the new shoots and more light and air can get in there and keep it from kind of clogging up with all the dead leaves and stuff. So pruning is a good thing for those rose bushes and uh, also for other things. I know, you know the, the grapevine out front uh, gets pruned uh, first by Jim Corliss while I was here and, and then uh, uh, now the Rick Boydson has doing, been doing that. Orchardists, you can see those guys going out in the orchards all the time each year, uh, kind of pruning back and, and getting things ready for the next year. So that happens. Uh, uh, throughout uh, our lives as, as we go along, you know, we see these, these prunings kind of going on around us. That happens in our lives as well, that uh, we have prunings going on within us and in our lives. Those can happen from uh, all kinds of different events that happen in our lives. We move out of the house and we're kind of, in a way, cutting off one shoot about how we lived in that house and we start and we create room and space for another shoot to come out with fresh leaves and with fresh uh, roses, uh, if you will, in uh, uh, flowers, uh, in terms of how we live our lives. It's a different thing. It's something new that's coming about because we've done that pruning, left off that one branch, moved on and created new space and new branches, new leaves, and new flowers. And those things happen in our, throughout our lives. Some of them are intentional, like I talked about moving out. Some of them are unintentional. Some of them are, are good things that we try to do in our lives to move on from one thing to another. Getting married, uh, having children, all of those things can happen to us. Some of them are, are things that happen to us that aren't so good. It's things that cause grief or fear or anger to come about within us. And because of those prunings, because of the ways our lives have been changed, the things that have been cut off or pruned from our lives. We experience this all the time. Uh, and one of the things that I noticed, I was rereading some uh, Agatha Christie books recently. And she started writing her books in the 20s. And the characters in there, in, those, in the, the books from the 1920s, were talking a lot about the difference in their lives between before the war, the Great War, which for them was World War I, and after 
World War I. And that's because, because, and that's because of the, the, the war itself was like a pruning. It pruned off part of their lives. It changed their lives from what it was before to what it was after. Uh, books in the 50s, the later 40s and 50s, have some of that in there as well about World War II and how life changed for uh, those characters uh, before the war to after the war. We can think about the pandemic. Certainly our life has been different this past year because of the pandemic. We've had massive pruning. We've gone from the big shrub down to the little uh, uh, cuttings again for the winter. We've been in our houses. We've been uh, cut off from uh, all kinds of things except maybe going to the grocery store for a while. And now we're kind of coming back. We're, we're, uh, we're going back out into restaurants again. We're going to movies again. Uh, coming to church again. And, uh, but things are different. It's not going to be the same. I remember hearing a lot of people saying early on during the pandemic, I can't wait to get back to where we were before, but we never will go back to that again because we've changed and the world around us has changed. Even when we get to the point of not having to wear face masks, not having to social distance in our pews, we're still, it's still going to be a different experience. So it has been a pruning experience that has, create, has cut off a lot of shoots, a lot of our old habits, a lot of our old experiences, and it is also creating new shoots with new leaves and new flowers, and we can enjoy those. We realize that's what life is about. That's what happens in life. That's how life goes. We never go back, we can never get back to where we were in our 20s or where we were in our teens. It's, it's a one-way street, in a sense. So, we are moving on, and the pandemic is taking us. God also prunes us. And that's what these stories in the, in the scriptures are about today. The story of Jesus talking about being the vine and we are all branches from the vine and God is the vine dresser who comes and, and cleans out the dead wood, basically. Uh, the, the wood that's not producing fruit. And Jesus isn't the only one in the Bible who talks about that kind of stuff. If you look into the third chapter of Luke, you find John the Baptist at the time of Jesus' uh, baptism talking about how God is taking an axe to the tree of Israel and is going to cut out the dead wood, wood, the wood that does not bear fruits. The prophets spoke a lot about, uh, about God being the one who will prune the vineyards, will cut back the dead wood. We do have dead wood in our lives, and God is one who can help us go through our lives and help us to see what is the dead wood in our lives and can help us to prune that back and create space for the new shoots, the new leaves, and the new flowers to grow in our lives. God will do that within us. God will work with us to do that if we ask, if we pay attention. Leo Tolstoy has said uh, something along the lines of a lot of people go along in this world behaving as if nobody's paying attention to them, as if nobody's watching. We know that God is always watching. What Tolstoy meant was that there were people who were doing bad things because they thought they could get away with it. There, was no, there were going to be no repercussions for them. But we know there are always repercussions. Because ultimately, we face God. Ultimately, we have to answer the question that God will ask us, why didn't you do this in this way? Or why did you do this in your life? God will help us to recognize the pieces and the parts, the dead wood that needs to be pruned away in our lives. If we listen 
and especially if we ask. So let's ask God. Ask God to help us to do that pruning so that we can, after winter is over, bloom again. I'm going to move to time, our time of prayer. I want to share with you some joys and concerns, first of all. Uh, John Myers had a stroke. Many of you already know that uh, about a week and a half ago. Uh, he is recovering from that. He's now at Lourdes and he, in Pasco. Uh, he cannot have visitors except Kay, uh, but he does uh, like phone calls. And he'll be there for a couple of weeks doing rehab. Also, we have Dan and Brenda Kephart on our prayer list. Dan has been diagnosed with cancer in the bladder. He also has tumors or masses in his hip bone uh, that need to be uh, treated as well. So uh, if you'd keep the Kepharts in your prayer. The Rinkers uh, also, uh, Roberta is still in hospice uh, and uh, she would be probably what was be termed as declining. Um, and uh, so, so keep her in your prayers. Also, um, uh, d um, not Dale Rinker, but uh, Sean Richmond. Sean Richmond has uh, been uh, diagnosed with cancer again, and uh, so he's going to be getting treatment as well. Keep Nancy in your prayers uh, with that uh, in, your, in mind as well, because she's caring both for Sean and for Roberta. And then, of course, Rick Boydston was recently diagnosed with leukemia, and uh, is, uh, they'll be um, uh, talking about treatments for that uh, in this coming month. So if you would keep him in your prayers uh, as well. So if you would like to, let's join together in prayer. Eternal God, we come before you as your people in prayer, and we share with you our joys, our concerns, our thoughts in this moment of silence. God of grace, we give you thanks for the gift of life. We give you thanks for the world around us, the mountains, the hills that are turning green, the flowers, the blossoms, the new leaves on trees, the sights and smells and sounds of spring. We give you thanks for family and for friends, for people we love and care for, and who love and care for us. We give you thanks for neighbors and co-workers, people in our communities whose work helps make our lives better. We give you thanks for the community in which we live for our state, for our nation, for our world. Let me pray for people who are sick, recovering from illness. We pray for those who are very ill, seriously ill. For those who have died from COVID, from other diseases, from accidents. We pray for families and relatives who are grieving loss of a loved one.
Lord, we pray for people around this world who are recovering from disasters, from the cold blasts of winter, from monsoons, hurricanes, from fires. We pray for those whose lives are disrupted and devastated by war. And for all those who feel they must flee their homes because they're not safe. And Lord, we pray for ourselves. Lord, we pray that you will help us, you will guide us, you will prune us to be better people, to be the kind of people who reach out to help others, to be the kind of people who share from our hearts. Help us to be the people you call us and created us to be. We ask this in the name of the risen Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I want to remind you that we will be meeting again in person next week. If you would like to join us for that Sunday, please do call in uh, Monday morning to Donna and get your name in for a reservation. And uh, we'll we'll gather together again and hopefully next week our technology will also um, cooperate with us. I know the sound probably isn't the greatest on this one either, but uh, we'll work on that. And we'll, we'll get there. Uh, this isn't uh, the finished product. This is just the beginning of our moving back to in-person worship. So now go forth in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to what is good. Repay no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, honor all people, help the afflicted. In Jesus' name, amen.